Okay, so that's the first synthesizer. Uh, we went over a lot of basics right there. The next one is the ESE. Okay, so starting off over on the left, here's our oscillator. We have a few more options. We have the sawtooth, or we can do a square. Notice I have a there's different sounds or characteristics of the sound. You can also move it to more of an irregular shaped square wave. Okay, so here's our oscillator. Over here we have 4, 8, 16. These are just octave changers. Um, over here we have an LFO. We'll talk about that later on. Uh, over here is the cutoff and resonance. Oh, actually, you know, let's talk about the LFO right now. So low frequency oscillator, remember what it's doing is applying low frequencies uh, that are below 20 hertz uh, to make the sound vibrate or oscillate. So as we turn this up, you'll hear the difference. And this is the speed. different uh, wave, a sawtooth wave. <laughs> so you can get a lot of crazy uh, cool effects. This is the speed and this will this will affect how high up and down the vibration is going. Okay, let's turn that back down to zero. <laughs> Okay, over here you have the cutoff and the resonance. It works the same exact way as the previous cutoff and resonance. So there's your filter section. Um, you have your velocity filter and AR, which is, works kind of similar to what I said before. As you press down the velocity, uh, it, will, it will have a wider range of affecting how much the filter is being used. Over here you have the volume, general volume, and you have velocity volume. Uh, same thing over here. Um, as this is turned up, the velocity that you press down on the keys uh, will more accurately reflect what the volume is going to come through. As you pull this back, uh, you'll have a narrow field of velocities that from to, to, to choose from. Um, they will just stay at one velocity, whatever whatever volume this is is tuned to. Okay, then you have a chorus for some extra sounds. <laughs> ensemble sound. Okay, then right here you have an attack and release. This is part of ADSR. This is the A and the R part of ADSR, so it's a little bit simpler. But what this is, is attack uh, determines when I press the keyboard down, it tells you this is the time that it takes to actually be engaged. So if I press it all the, bring it all the way down, it's instant. As soon as I press down the keyboard, it starts playing. If I pull it up a little bit, The more I pull this up, the longer it takes to come in. So that's what the attack is. The release is when I let go of the keyboard, how long it takes for it to, or how long it keeps on playing. So if I pull all the way down, it shuts off automatically. If I pull it up a little bit, a little more. takes a long time for it to release. Okay, so this is the ESC. Now, remember that in all these instruments, they all have, you can click and find them from here or in the library, same menu, but they all have an amazing uh, database of incredible sounds that you can that you can mess with and explore. <laughs> exploring all those and, and being f more familiar with that. Okay, next one is ESP. Okay, it's getting a little more complicated, but the same rules apply. So over here you have the oscillator, and you have a, you have a few different options to mix different sounds. So here you have the sawtooth. You can have, you can put in some square wave. 
This is an octave and two octaves below, and noise. Noise is just a random sample of, of many different frequencies. Um, so here's your oscillator section. Over here you have the, uh, the uh, octave changing. Um, over here we have the, the LFO again. We'll, we'll go over that in a while. Um, but here we have the, the cutoff, the frequency cutoff, the filter. And the resonance. Here we have the velocity, volume, and the volume, like we've spoken before. The velocity filter, uh, similar to what we talked about before. Uh, we have the chorus. And we have the overdrive. Um, and then you have the ADSR. So here is our first full ADSR. Now, we know what the A and the R mean. A will increase the time that when I press down the keyboard, how long it takes to, to be initiated. R, when I let go of the keyboard, how long it will continue playing. Now, S is not a time uh, measurement. It is a volume measurement. Uh, it tells you when I hold down the keyboard and it's in a, I guess you could say, sustain mode, how, lo how loud is it going to be? This is what the volume meter says. Uh, D is for decay. That will tell you when the attack is done through the attack phase, there is another phase where it transitions to this sustain level. And de decay is the time that it takes from after the attack is done until transitioning to the sustain level. So this is what we have for the sound. Let me turn up the attack so it's a little smoother. Okay, you notice that it kind of goes up and then it comes back. That slow coming in is the attack. And then when it comes down, that's the sus that's showing you that it's coming back down to the sustain level. <coughs> if I turn up the sustain level, it'll it'll s remain loud. Okay. <coughs> now, if I turn down the decay, there will be an abrupt transition from the attack to the sustain. <coughs> Let's see. I turn down. <coughs> So as soon as the attack is done, it cuts straight to the sustain level, but there's no transition. So in order to have that transition, you mess with the decay a little bit. And then the release is just when I let go of it, how long is it going to keep sustaining? So that's what the, uh, the full ADSR looks like. Um, and then the last of all, we have our LFO. Now you can go left or right. There's two types of uh, sounds that you can get. So let's turn up the speed so you can hear it a little bit. If you go the other side. So that's the LFO, and depending on how fast or what type of LFO you use, you can get some really interesting sounds. If it's a really slow, it can feel like it's really slowly moving. If it's fast, if it's super fast, it can sound like a ray gun. Um, it can sound like another synthesizer. You can just do all kinds of interesting things. Um, and don't forget to check out all the presets. <laughs> Uh, you can do all these things just with those controls that we just took a look at. Okay, the next one is EFM1. Now this uses FM technology, which is a little more complicated. Um, this, this little button here is similar to the frequency cutoff, but it uses FM technology. But if you think of it just as a filter cutoff, uh, it that's, works the same way. <laughs> It just adds a few more harmonics to the mix. Now over here you have your ADSR, what we talked about before. Um, 
So here's your volume ADSR. Uh, up here you have a filter or modulation ADSR. Um, uh, ADSRs are usually in what we call envelopes. So this is called a modulation envelope. Um, all this is, the ADSR works with the same concept. The only thing, instead of, instead of affecting the volume with ADSR, you affect the filter. So as so right now the attack is, is really fast. If I turn up the attack, then the filter will take longer to be initiated. If I bring it down, then it's initiated instantly. So this ADSR is just applied to the filter. Okay, um, here's your LFO. You have two ways of, of going at it. using FM technology with the LFO. So here's your LFO section. Uh, you have a few more buttons up here that are kind of useful. You have a unison. You can transpose up or down. And you can do a fine trans... Uh, you can tune it fine. Um, from a half step to a half step, from for example C to C sharp, there's a what's called 100 cc's, and these are just a measurement of of making a very fine tune. So this you can go up uh, to up to 50 cc's. You can you can uh, detune it or tune it a uh, halfway to the next half step. <laughs> That's a very fine way of tuning things. Uh, you have your glide voice and you have your voices here. Now, a voices allow me to play many notes at the same time. If I go to mono, I can't play as many notes as 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 I want to. Let me try and pick a different instrument. Uh, so if I even if I hold down two notes, the second note that that I play will be played over the first one. Now, this is really important because l some synthesizers do this, and it's kind of if if you want to have that effect, uh, where only where when you press down the new button that the new note will play, then you use a mono. If you don't and you want more notes to be able to be played, uh, then you use more than a mono, like 16 or just more voices. Okay, so this is EF1. EFM1. Remember, there's just an amazing supply of sounds. Down here, you have a randomize button. You can ran. What this does is you can randomize all the buttons and see what just what happens. So I'm gonna randomize it by 20. Press the button. So you can really get just an amazing, uh, amazing amount of, of just incredible sounds that that no other instrument can really uh, create. <laughs> 